What's up, guys? It's James with This Week in Airsoft. I am back again with uh, a guy who I knew right when I met him that he would be a good friend, and he's a very cool guy. Uh, no one more deserving than what he's gotten in the Airsoft world so far. Uh, Mr. Robo Murray from Canada. How you doing, Robo? What's up? Thanks for having me, James. I really appreciate it, man. Hey, it's no problem, man. We, 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 uh, we met under crazy circumstances, <laughs> you know, but I feel like it was serendipity. You know what I mean? I really do. Well, it's one of those things, man, like, you, you, you know, when you meet somebody while getting shot at by some sort of projectile, it kind of sorts out if you guys are going to be friends quickly or that's not. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Um, all right, man. So let's, let's, let's jump right in. You're, you're, in, you're in Canada. I am. Okay. You're, uh, you're a graphic designer by trade. I am. That's correct as well. Yep. And uh, you, I think, I think the Airsoft community kind of knows you from Instagram where you kind of got your, 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 your public start. And kind of got the big fame. Tell us a little bit about what got you what what got you there. What got you into airsoft, and how did we get here? Yeah, that's those are good questions, dude. Um, to be honest, so you know, when I was a younger cat, and by that I mean when I wasn't like you know in my thirties kind of thing. Uh, right. Before I went to you know university and stuff here in Canada, I was a high school student, and I loved uh, you know I loved action sports like paintball and things like that. Uh, that was what was available or conscious to me in reality at the time. And I you know I was one of those kids that grew up. Uh, playing a lot of first-person shooters, uh, but more to even the side of the tactical first-person shooters, like going back to, say, stuff like Rainbow Six with the original stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, that. I mean, you know, I grew up with that kind of interest. I had, a, I had an uncle that was, that was a, uh, you know, pretty big in the policing industry here and where, where, around where I live. So, you know, I had that influence, always wanted to be a cop uh, as a kid. And at the very last moment, man, I, you know, I decided to go through sciences and art, you know, through, through my professional schooling stuff, my post-secondary. So, you know, there was a little bit of a divergence there. And then uh, I was a poor student <laughs> uh, for a very long time, as, as some people go through that phase. And uh, after that, you know, finding a corporate job, which is what I do now. I'm a graphic designer and I work in the real world, as we right. uh, kind of joke about it. Um, and that afforded me a little bit more freedoms as a you know mid twenties person to pick up some more hobbies, you know, like go back to doing fun things in life, not just work. So, I I'd, I'd thought of returning to paintball, and uh, I remembered being at some surplus store years previous, uh, seeing you know the the carbon fiber G thirty six on the wall at the time, and being like, whoa, that looks like a real gun. Like, how can that? What? If, how can you do that? You know, that right. sort of thing. So that was my first kind of introduction to something like airsoft. And over those years, and returning to that idea later, I was like, that's what I want to do. I mean, if I can do first-person shooters, and I was at the time getting back into being a physical person, so working out, running, all that sort of stuff, which I hadn't done for almost half a decade, um, I was like, yeah, this is conducive. Like, you know, no more, no more first-person shooters on Xbox. No more first-person shooters on, on PC, uh, per se. More let's go out and do that. Let's get off the couch, right? right. So, dude, I bought, I bought, you know, on a whim, on a whim, I went to this surplus store here in where I live, and I bought, a at the time, a G&G, &G, what they called their Max series. Now they've all switched everything to Top Tech and whatever, but bought that G&G, &G, um, and, you know, freak of nature, it didn't blow up in my hand. We had a lot of problems with G&Gs in, in, in Canada back that back in that time frame. Uh, mine treated me really well, and I was hooked ever since, dude, honestly. like, um, And really, the turning point was, there was about a half a year where I was switching cell phones, and I had a BlackBerry, so I couldn't have... Instagram right, <laughs> at yeah. all, it didn't exist, doesn't exist, uh, and I switched to an Android phone, and I, the first, one of the first things I got was what's Instagram, and uh, uh, you know, somebody on my, my follower page just this last, uh, this last 24 hours commented on my very first picture, uh, and it was a picture of like all my Airsoft stuff just on the ground, and I had no idea what Airsoft really was at that point in time, I was a total noob, uh, you know, I had my Swiss Arms vest in there, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, all the staples of a noob, right? I think right. I, the only thing missing from that picture was some ACU, like BDU pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's yeah. it, dude. Like I just needed some UCP in there, and everything would have been total walk on Jerry. You know? What right. I mean? Yeah. Um, and dude, as soon as I had Instagram, it was it was just a slow progression. It was it was a slow progression over the last say three or four, three and a half, uh, sorry, three three and a half years of just consistently posting and watching what people post. And trying to mimic what I what I saw was awesome. You know what I mean? Like uh, growing up in the airsoft community, looking at you know photographers like Dave, like Dave Bax from sure. from Airsoft Obsessed sure. and stuff, and going, "Wow, we can take it to that level." All right, let's do this. Let's go down that road then. You know what I mean? Let's let's try to emulate that. And then people like KY Buzzsaw, when he hit the scene, man, and his level of photography and, and media to support the companies that we were all spending a ton of money on, 
dude, it changed my world. Like, and from that day on, I think I, you know, go two years ago, I was really like, you know what I do, I want to hit those levels and hopefully, you know, you know, not hopefully, um, the, the upside of that was, I was, I guess I was consistent enough and I participated enough and that's an important part. What got me here is that I constantly, had, I had constant conversations with the people that I looked up to, you know what I mean? That that was a big thing, reaching out to my mentors and being like, this is what I'm doing. How do I make that better? Right. You know? Right. Uh, you know, walking in with my own passions, my own goals, and then and finding mentors rather than, you know, just sitting around going, what do I do? Or or even better, sitting around not doing anything going, what do I do? You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, dude, I'd say that's how I basically got here. You know, you mentioned it before is that my Instagram is my public persona. And then that public persona has just, I guess, given people an avenue to find out who me, Rob Murray or Rob Robo Murray uh, who is, you know, who I am as a person and why I love Airsoft. And I guess that kind of resonates a bit. So I'm more than happy since I'm willingly putting myself in the public eye to, to, to kind of, you know, if I can be a bastion of like, Hey, this is what I think Airsoft should be. And you agree. Awesome. Let's go do it. Right, <laughs> you know? right, right, right. So, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm on your, uh, I'm on your Instagram page and, Thanks, uh, man. you know, I'm just like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, I'm like this guy, 1,099 posts. Yeah, you man. Know, Nine thousand six hundred and nineteen <laughs> followers, man. Yeah, man. I'm almost at ten K now. It's it's been crazy. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll be honest. There so that's that's another common question I get is, you know, when did it actually turn? Like was there a, a proverbial switch that flipped? And there sort of was, man. Honestly, there sort of was. It was last year at the very end of the summer, right? When we were getting close to going to Faded Giant, right? Like I was at that point I'd already reached out and became pretty good friends with all the AMS guys. Uh, again, Dave Bax, you know, other guys in the industry, the KWA, right. folks, all that. But, I mean, it's different. You understand, like, we live in a world where we, we generally communicate with other people through a, uh, an intangible barrier called the Internet. Right. I mean, it's, it's, an, awesome, it's an awesome tool. Let's, let's get that. I, I would never be who I am without the Internet. Um, I never would have met all the people that I've met. I mean, we wouldn't be talking right now. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right? But, but within that, there's, there's a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, a disparaging gap between reality and obviously non-reality. So, I mean, right towards when I was going to Fade a Giant, um, you know, I made friends with, with a guy, you know, call sign Hollywood, Chris Bast. Sure, yeah. And, uh, you know, he really, he really kind of advocated for, for me behind the scenes, I guess, is how, I, how I've come to understand what he did. Is, you know, he, he just, guess basically introduced me to a ton of people behind the scenes before I even met them. And then when I met everybody at Fade a Giant, you know, everybody kind of turned around and was like, you're exactly who I thought you were. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. in the sense that, you know, what I post online is me. It's not, it's not a charade. It's not me trying to change your personality so I become a famous person. It's if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. You know what I mean? Um, and it was that moment, dude. It was that moment meeting everybody in Faded Giant and really putting a personal touch to things that I think people truly got. What I was trying to do was, uh, was sincere. I guess is the best way to put it. You know, like I actually, I actually care about airsoft. You know, what I, mean? I think right. meeting me in person, well, that was that was kind of the turnaround moment, dude. And from there, I honestly went from, you know, two years of gaining about three thousand followers on Instagram, to that six thousand what I've gained since then, and that's to me incredible. It's 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 literally it, it blows my mind. I don't know what to say half the time, James, when I think about it because I'm a pretty pretty humble guy. You know what I mean? So like right. when I think about it, I'm like, whoa, ten thousand people care what I do <laughs> you know what I mean like it's kind of crazy to me man no that's you know uh, uh when I met you and I, I I am always I'm always impressed by some of the airsoft guys I meet you know Greg Wong just a super nice guy you know what I mean he's just like I'm Greg Wong you know what I mean? he's like yeah. people give him a lot of shit but he's just, <laughs> he's just a super nice guy he's just straight up you know yeah. Jet you know people like oh he's a big megastar he's just a freaking regular guy Dude, you know? you to the guy, he says hi back and asks you how your day is. Yeah, exactly. He's just say a, hi like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, he's just a regular guy. So, you know, yeah. when I met you, I was really impressed. You know, you're just like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, da, da. You know, I was like, this guy's freaking cool, man. You know, and that's and that's the thing. And and I think our first interaction was some, you know, air, little airsoft drama on our Facebook page. And, you know, you, you came to me, you said, hey, look, you know. Um, Dude, yeah. Yeah, you know, you came up and you, you posted, you know, said, hey, look. You know, I don't. Guys shouldn't leave uh, this week in airsoft because of whatever. You know what I mean? This is, you know, 
and, and you know, you kind of went on and gave a little explanation about everything and said, hey, look, you know, this is whatever it is what it is, you know, and I was like, this guy is a freaking genuine human being. And that's the thing, you know, a lot of a lot of times people are like in Airsoft, one of the things that comes along with Airsoft, I believe, is like this love of the flame war and the Internet, like Internet's a big part of what Airsoft is. So guys are like, oh, well, you know, I got to get on the forum and blast this fool. You know, let me go on Facebook and let him have it, you know, and you're not, you know, you're not like that. You're not that guy. Um, no, and actually, you know, let me let me touch on that for a second. I mean, it's something I think about a lot, dude. I mean, it's, you know, as someone who's chosen to be somewhat in the public eye, and obviously I'm, I'm becoming more of an industry fixture. I mean, I'm, that my goal is to work in this industry or, or something similar like firearms, right? It's that, you know, everyone wants to marry their passions with their work, essentially, right? right? Sure, so yeah. within that, dude, I mean, we've got to realize that – um, the state of airsoft, and I mean, I put a lot of this in quotations because I'm, I'm reading off what, what's on the internet too, and a lot of it's worded this way. It's like, airsoft is drama or whatever. Like the industry, there's a bunch of drama in the industry. And let's not forget, man, it's not really in the industry. We're all humans, and we, yeah. we, we, inv we involve ourselves in many different industries across the world. And if we don't think that whatever drama that we may see online happening in airsoft doesn't happen in banking, doesn't happen in automotive, doesn't happen in government. Guess what it does? People yeah. lose their jobs over this stuff all the time. Right. So it's nothing special. The special thing about Airsoft, though, is our target audience is between 15 and 25. That's largely before people have matured enough to really know what real world Absolutely. is. Absolutely. <laughs> so that mixing of a, of a juvenile attitude, and I don't mean that negatively, that juvenile kind of or younger target market mixed with the closeness of a small industry such as Airsoft, that closeness with the industry, you're going to see some business stuff and some human stuff get really close together and not a target audience that fully understands how to deal with that yet. Right. So how that – you always will see that as drama, industry, Airsoft. <laughs> like yeah, it's not, right. And I, I urge people to go, it's not that, man. You know, there's we can we can deal with this stuff like adults. It's like how you how you mentioned it. You know, a completely tertiary subject to what you do at this week in airsoft spilled over <laughs> into your forum, and I saw people just because they were fans of mine and I respect this completely stood up for some stuff that I guess they saw wrong with that situation, but they took it out on you. Right. And that's where again, it's for me as an adult, it's easy for me to step in and go, dude. This is not your deal, James. And to my fans, this is not James's deal. Right. You no, know, hold fire. It's okay. I'm a big boy. It's no. You don't have to attack somebody else by accident here. You know what I mean? So it's, it's one of those. It's just how I kind of logically see. You know, this is how I deal with real life. So I try to, as much as possible, deal with airsoft this way. And along the way, most importantly, educate others on how to do that too. Because I realize it's, it's the industry we have. We right. have to help grow it. It's very, very new. You know what I mean? Right. Paintball has had the last 30 years to figure this out. Right. We've yeah. had the last 10, 5. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know Paintball's I mean? like been maturing for a long time. Long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's one of those things that, you know, it per, it's pervasive in every topic. We want to talk about legislation laws or all that sort of stuff. Everybody's like, why aren't you picking on paintball? It's because paintball's known to people. Yeah. We're just the new thing. Humans are afraid of new stuff all the time. If, yeah. If laser tag reinvented itself tomorrow and looked like real guns, we wouldn't be bothered anymore. Legislators would go after that. It's just, again, we've got a really young industry that uh, has young fans, and you're going to see some of a little bit of the high school stuff follow that. Now, right. it's not negative. It's just it happens with everything new. You know what right. I mean? Right. Grow right. it to a, a more mature point. Right, right. Okay, all right, cool. So let let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, before we get too too in the we get into other stuff. Yeah, I want to cover this and I didn't get to cover it. Um you have a blog, an old blog, which you said mm -hmm. you don't really, you know, you, you don't really you do, you did a, a, a myriad of other things on that blog. I yeah, think I it's important to point to it because there's some a couple good airsoft articles there that I think yeah, I, I think it was really really well some stuff was really well written. Um, and it's uh, I, I will link the thing, link the blog. It's iegravity.com. Uh, it's it's Robo Murray's. What's that? Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. That's oh, awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, I will link the article so you guys don't go and be like, what is this about? You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever he's talking about here. What is this about business cards? You know, it's all kinds of things from a guy who does all kinds of things. But there's some airsoft focused stuff there, which I think is really good. And um, I think uh, there are a few places that do a great job of focusing 
and writing stuff for Airsoft, um, but not a lot, you know, and I think that anytime we see that, we should focus on it, you know, because it's kind of like a one, two, three of Airsoft and like physical fitness and a lot of things are covered there. And I think it's really important stuff. You know, Airsoft is not just go to the store, pick up a gun, go to the field. It's not that it's it's physical fitness and hydration and camouflage and what's right for this time and area and which op promoter do I go to and you know what, how do I behave at this certain op and what do I need for 40 hours it's like all kinds of things you know what I mean it's it's definitely a lot of different components to it so um, definitely worth looking at guys it, like I said they're old articles but I, I think uh, Robo did a great job with them and I want to point that out and highlight them um, I appreciate that man yeah. and, you're, and you're absolutely right I mean you again I want to I want to touch on something real quick because I think you said the perfect thing here and that's you know one of the things I try to point out or educate people on the most it's the one really confusing thing till still to this day that I see as a as a gap between airsoft and what I'll call athletic sciences um, and it's what you know it's what people gravitate towards when they look at someone like a Travis Haley talking about firearm stuff right. uh, that that gap that the firearms industry is trying to close between buy this tool and knowing exactly how to run this tool, right? I mean, there's right. there's a gap there that we've gone. Okay, so you know how to run the tool, but how's your body going to that? Oh, we don't care. Well, that those days are over, and it's the same thing. When I first entered airsoft, okay, so I come from a background. My brother is a highly active guy too. He runs Ironmans. He used to play goalie in in, in hockey and stuff like that. So I've always had a connection with at least the understanding of nutrition, uh, physical body sciences, things like that. Even just through him naturally, right? So when I first entered Airsoft, the most concerning thing or the, the confusing part to me was in all of my experience of watching people do triathlons and all that and the amount of work that they put in, okay, to say do a triathlon that takes them, you know, again, we're talking about like say your average on the street triathlon takes them four or five hours to complete. To see the physical exertion that a human body goes through during that period in time and the amount of prep time leading up to that and prep time and repair time afterwards, the amount of control over nutrition, hydration, supplements, et cetera, et cetera. To see kids go out on a field in the middle of summer dressed in fully clothed, we're talking like no t-shirts and shorts yeah, here, right? Yeah, right? In a sport that generally demands full coverage and then once you're fully covered, it demands you put a bunch of extra crap on top. You might as well be wearing a winter coat, I mean, in the end. who? don't hydrate pro properly. I mean, yep. don't even bring enough water for them to sustain them for the day if they were sitting in front of the computer, let alone running around for 8 to 12, 16, 24 right. hours. Of, um, carrying heavy stuff that their body is not used to carrying, running for longer periods of time than they ever put in the time to do. I mean, I was, I kind of sat around as a scientific guy going, there's something wrong here. Right, right. Um, and that's why you hear me rant about, about nutrition and stuff like that and that is taking, let's take you know, airsoft's fun, but how do we? What are the things we can look at to actually take it to that next level for those who are interested? And let me be clear: it's not about buying a more expensive kit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know right. I mean? like, that's where we get lost. A lot of us in airsoft go, "Oh, I'm ready for the next level." That means I'm I'm buying a real steel kit. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, yeah. That's that still will always remain a preference item. That will be. That's not a tool. That's a preference item in your closet. You know what yep. I mean? That never will make you better. What will make you better is if you start running consistently. Start doing 50 push-ups a day. <laughs> you know, like, whatever. It doesn't take a lot, but that's the next level. You know right. what I mean? Right. Or making sure you, you're drinking the proper amount of, of liquids seven days before an event, during an event, and after the event. Yep. Having all the proper nutritional requirements. Things like, you know, enough protein, enough, enough carbs, enough uh, electrolytes in your system during these events and even before and after to ensure you're running as an athletic person. And that's the thing. I think a lot of kids just see the cool guy stuff, the I can dress up and look like a Navy SEAL. You know what I mean? Um, but they miss all the stuff that actually makes Navy SEALs what Navy SEALs really yeah, are. Yeah, right. And it's not cool guy toys. Yeah, training, oh. buds. Training, yeah. It's body conditioning, <laughs> man. It's, 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 uh, um, it's dedication. It's um, discipline. It's all of those things. You know, it's PT every single day, not because they want to do it because it's a part of the lifestyle, you right. know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, I, I liken it to a, a football player would not sit on his couch for, you know, 10 months out of the year to go play the Super Bowl. Yeah. It doesn't happen, you know, and we do a lot of work. I'm not calling what we do the Super Bowl, and I'm not calling what we do ever, ever what I say it's anything close to what real steel guys do, like real world guys do. 
but you know what? There's a lot of the same foundations. No, there's a there. lot of work. And, and, you know, that's the thing. Guys don't realize that. You know, it's uh, a soldier. You know, they have daily PT. And all, there's all kinds of things that go into them doing what they do. I mean, I, I'll be the first to say I'm a computer technician. I have a very sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, it's like. Then I go, I'm going to Copperhead. Well, let me throw all this stuff on I haven't put on in six months and go out here and die on this field, you know? Yeah, man. So that's that's the airsoft mentality, and we got to get out of that. I mean, I saw guys, you know, at the FOB at Copperhead hydrating with Gatorade. Whoa. And, you know? and that's, not the way to hydrate. No, not the way to hydrate. And, you know? dude, I, even me, guys on our team, they went through that phase. I've learned them good since. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like, right. But it's about that. It's about breaking, you know, there's two things that could go wrong in when it comes to athletics, and that is you could do nothing or you could do all the wrong things too, right? So right. those guys assume that because they've been sold some branded stuff on the TV uh, that Gatorade is a hydrator and it's got electrolytes. And I always joke about Idiocracy by Mike Judge because electrolytes. Yeah, plant. Brando. <laughs> Brando. Yeah, Brando. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's it's one of those things where people go, oh yeah, it's got electrolytes, so it must be good. Yeah, it also has a half a bag of sugar, and yeah. you will, you're going to go into systemic shock within four hours of drinking too much of that on a high exertion scenario. Yeah, it's not meant to sustain you over twelve hours. Yeah. it's it's meant to be an emergency thing when you're out with your family during a picnic. I mean, even even pro pro athletes don't even drink it. It's, you know what yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where. There are other options out there. You just need to be a little bit more scientifically inclined or go willing, willing to go do some simple research on Google for 30 seconds to find that Gatorade is not your option. Yeah, <laughs> you know? those Gatorade uh, containers looking. Yeah, those Gatorade containers on the side of football games are filled with ice water. That's not it. Gatorade. <laughs> it's just branding, you yeah. know what I mean? At that point they're, you're, you're, you're disconnected between the, the business side of things and the actual science behind running a human being. So right. yeah, dude, it's it's one I dude you know, we saw a ton of guys. We saw guys flat out, you know, who had thought that, you know, I'm going to beat the heat by wearing a T-shirt, didn't think that how much overexposure to the sun destroys the human body and you can't come back from it. Right. There's no, I'm going to go rest for 20 minutes. I'm sorry, you're done for the day. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. Or like, you hit that wall, you're done. So, Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a slow process, dude. I think, you know, especially if, if more and more of us keep kind of harping on these really boring scientific -y kind of things that have nothing to do with cool accessories, yeah, sure, it's not cool, it's not sexy to talk about, but eventually we'll all get it, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. So. Yeah, and we're not saying don't buy cool accessories. No, dude, buy all the cool accessories. Yeah, I buy all the cool stuff. Your WH star or R, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> that's, my, that's what I like to do in life. Um, you know, again, with that disclaimer. It does not make you a superhero. It remains a preference for all, for always. But yeah, airsoft yeah. is half of why I like airsoft is because I get to play with stuff I don't get to really play with here in Canada. Yeah. Not easily, anyways. You know. Right. So right, right. yeah, buy all the cool guy toys. Just make sure you're working out too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so guys, I will link that those articles uh, in. It'll be in the description. Okay, so definitely check that out. Um, let's talk about. Uh, well, we're not gonna we. I'm going to link guys to your YouTube. You, your YouTube's full of all kinds of goodies. Yep. So check it out. Check out Robo's YouTube. We're not going to beat that up in the bush. Everything's there for you to see. It's all there, yeah. Um, his Instagram, will have that up there, all that stuff. Now, let's talk quickly about your sponsors. You're sponsored by Enola Gay and Red Wolf Airsoft. Red I Wolf's am. pretty I new. Am, yeah. Enola Gay, you've had them for a little bit now. Um, yeah, so Enola, Enola had approached me last year. And, and, you know, again, it was one of those things where I'm sitting there going, like, little old me? Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like Yo, man, like I love your smoke grenades. Like, why are you talking to me, kind of thing, right? So, I guess I, had, I, had, you know, just out of photography, a photographic interest. You know, I took a couple pictures uh, for content of, you know, pictures of a Nola Gay smoke, just because there's nice colors and things like that. And I edited it on my computer, and it's on my my Instagram somewhere. And you know, I'd learned a long time ago how we do the Instagram tagging thing and effective ways to do that to ensure that we're supporting each other as well as gaining notoriety with people that maybe you don't know and all that sort of stuff, right? And they, uh, they, Jim, the over in the UK, emailed me and was like, "Dude, we really, you know, we kind of dig what you're doing. Uh, we know you like smoke grenades, and it's you know, no skin off our back. You want to do a handshake deal? We don't like you. You don't like us. We can both walk away, whatever. But no big deal. We'll provide you smoke. You just keep being awesome. And and honestly, man, they've been awesome. <laughs> Anola has been awesome since you know they basically reached out to me last summer. They you know they 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 hooked me up with smoke." Uh, you know the flag and stuff that you see. I got hoodies. I got uh, T-shirts and stuff at Faded, and um, they've been nothing but one of the best relationships. You know, up until I talk about this next one, 
uh, that I could have imagined, man. And, you know, at Copperhead, I finally got to meet Chris, who runs their U.S. sales stuff. And uh, honestly, man, like that guy has so much positive energy. Uh, you know, it's, it's totally right up my alley to, to finally meet a, a representative straight-faced uh, from my, my one of my sponsors who is exactly as high energy as I am. So I was just right. like, this is awesome. Um, and then my other sponsor, this is kind of recent, and it happened since Faded. Uh, I'd ended up at Faded Giant, and like I said, it kind of you know kind of changed things for me. Once people got to meet me in person and got to get away from that kind of uh, intangible wall of the internet, um, you know, I, I basically Robert uh, Robert Manoa from from the U.S. sales uh, manager for Red Wolf reached out and said, "Dude, I just want to say like you you know you're this down to earth dude. We don't really sponsor a lot of people, but we have been looking to expand in the, the U.S. market." And out of all the dudes. Now, all the ladies that we've been kind of looking at, you're the, I guess their opinion was I was the most real and sincere. So I was just really honored. And, you know, over the last six months, we, we hammered things out and I signed a piece of paper um, that where, you know, they helped me out, continue doing what I do in Airsoft. And that is, you know, do videos, do reviews, do uh, mindset pieces, do editorials, whatever. Uh, and help me with my goal of traveling a lot more because... Obviously, as someone who wants to participate in as much airsoft as I can, it's hard for me to do that just in Canada. I mean, right. I got to travel to the United States, and Red Wolf really realized that and was like, "We believe in you enough to help you do that." You know what I mean? So they've been they've been awesome. My sponsors, uh, and I can't appreciate this more, and I really want to hammer this home uh, of why I'm with them over anybody else is that they have been from the get go, literally, Robo, do what you do best. And we're happy. <laughs> they, you know, there's none of this BS behind the room, behind the sales uh, wall of we want you to be like this and we want you to promote this because shut up and just promote it. None of none of that, you know, sometimes can get into the, those kind of areas when we're talking about a corporation stepping in to sponsor, you know, especially in a, a niche market like like airsoft. Right. Uh, right. It's been phenomenal, man. Nothing but I can't, you know, nothing but big thumbs up from those companies. And I don't even say that as a brand ambassador right now. That's human me with some support that I appreciate saying it was right. it's been awesome man. I feel like Red Wolf Airsoft is like the coup of coups when it comes to getting a sponsor because they're like you know I mean I, I view them as you know someone who's someone who before I played Airsoft they were one of the two companies that I really followed on yep. YouTube and Arclight and you know I was watching Arclight's videos and I was like oh man I want that 870 shotgun with shell ejection <laughs> you know what I mean it's like I'd go oh. on and on I'd be on their site like I'm gonna order this I'm gonna order that you know and it was you know they, it feels like they are the company that's been kind of nurturing airsoft even just overseas yep. you know and connecting to the US for years and years and years you know what I mean like before anyone knew about eHobby Asia or any of those other companies you knew about Red Wolf Airsoft, and even to, still to this day, you yeah. know. Matter of fact, when I do at my job, which is totally inappropriate, when I do like an internet test, I'm like, well, I know you've never been to Red Wolf, <laughs> RedWolfAirsoft.com, so let me go to Red Wolf Airsoft site, and uh, okay, there you go. Now it's in your cache. <laughs> at least, yeah, at least you know it's not in the cache, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. Um, no, but that's yeah, that's awesome. I, I think that's a great. I think it's cool, man. I think it's uh, congratulations. I think it's awesome, and uh, you know, I envy you, and I will kill you. This evening. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I honestly have had a lot of people say that, and I'm I'm right there with you. I mean, if I was anybody but me experiencing this as me, the individual, um, I, I and I do I, I think of the same ways as you do, dude. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm sponsored. That you know, it hasn't changed me as a person, so I still view it as very much like you know, when I meet my mentors. Right. Now that I'm on their, you know, I guess I'm on their level now. I still don't view it that way. I still I'm still booking up at everybody, dude, because. You know, when I entered Airsoft, I've only been in this sport for about four years. You right. know what I mean? Like, you know, sure, my mindset has been with me my entire life, but I didn't really get into this sport uh, until then. And there's been so many people that have been in this sport way longer than I. So I sit here and I look up at all these things. So when I got an email from Robert going, hey, we're interested in you, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm just some Canadian dude, man. Like, what do you mean Red Wolf wants to talk to me? You know what I mean? Or like... Or again, I, you know, the times I've sat down with Dave Bax, I mean, I'm sitting there going like, dude, like you're an idol of mine. <laughs> like right. you're the nicest, biggest dude in, in, in Airsoft in, in sort of my perspectives in terms of who, who's got a right attitude, who pr gives back to the community and what you consider us friends. <laughs> like it's, it's on that level. I, and dude, so I, I will agree with you. I mean, in my opinion too, 
airsoft is that for me it's it's the pinnacle of where i would have ever maybe dreamed of ending up you know like i you know and there's some extra bonuses in there they don't tend to muck themselves up in any you know the quote unquote drama that we talk about in airsoft so right. a perfect place for me they're supportive and um they're consistent i mean you like you said dude like even though us north americans might not have thought of them as the go to forever airsoft is much older in europe and asia and right. they have been there forever. They right. yeah, they're, they're the they're, they're the I know I know some guys probably a lot of guys, younger guys probably think oh airsoft GI and everything and I'm not knocking airsoft GI. No. I love what they do. They're one of no. the other. It's like between them and the, they're the two companies that I followed airsoft GI and Red Wolf right. when I first got in into airsoft. Yep. But you know for me, Red Wolf was like they're the granddaddy. Like they have everything, uh, everything's there that you can purchase it. It's like here we go and free shipping and it's coming to the u.s you know what i mean and we got it you know and it's like they got airsoft surgeon and i don't know it's like this whole vibe of like okay we have we have all this stuff and you know we're gonna make sure it's right for you we're offering you extra accessories and stuff yeah i mean it's kind of cool so you know i i I know a lot of guys view other companies but i think that uh the uh, red wolf is the gold standard you know what i mean because before anybody was before any of the big companies that we know now were on YouTube with like Tim and stuff like that, you had ArcLight. ArcLight was doing videos like in 2007. You know what I mean? And that's how old his videos are. So I think that uh, Red Wolf is a great company, man. I and definitely congratulations on getting with them. Thank you, you so could, much. Man. You could like not said, have done I better. I'm a little bit biased when I agree there, but if I can throw the bias aside, I'm I'm right there with you, man. Because right. like I said, up until six months ago, and I, and still to this day, I still view it the same way. You know what right. I mean? Like, who cares about a piece of paper with my signature on it? That really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I still perceive it this the exact same way anybody would look up to that. You know what I mean? So it's, if anything, it just makes you appreciate, I guess, what you have a little bit more. So, right, right, right. Okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate you congratulating me on that. No, no problem, man. No, it's Thanks, awesome, man. dude. It's very awesome. It was, right. it was all surprising to me. So I'm still riding that that kind of high of like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. No, I, I feel you, man. Yeah. All right. So um, I want to talk about one more thing before we get into Copperhead, uh, yep. and that's. Robo-apparel.com. Sure, okay, man, yeah. that's that's uh you know you, you know you told me off the air it's not your bread and butter it's something you just feel yep. passionate about doing you know yep. I, I've done graphic design stuff in the background in the past and you know I did logos and stuff on Craigslist and all kinds of things so I get the bug you know the the graphic design bug where you're like well you know I got this idea so I'm just gonna buy, you know what I mean yep. I get it um your stuff is really good. You know, it's really good. You know, and if it was shit, I'd tell you it's shit. But well, it's it's that. it's really good stuff. You know, I, I like I just told you I was at Lightning Strike and I saw three, I said two or three guys in your plate carrier, in your plate carrier stuff. You know what I mean? I thought this is pretty freaking sweet. You know, I, and I got to see it right up close and I was like, this is actually really nice. You know, really nice stuff. American Apparel. I mean, good quality. You know, and then the other designs. You know, I mean. It's well thought out. The the mottos and stuff you have on them are good. The graphics are amazing. You know, I think you've done a great job with it. Thanks and uh, you know, I encourage every guy, everybody to check it out. What what got you to a point where you're like, I'm gonna do this shirt thing? <laughs> it's actually that's that's a good question because there is actually a little bit of a, you know, what we would call a story behind that. Um, you know, as as humans, we are we love storytellers and a story behind something. So. I mean, I'm classically design, uh, trained as a, as a designer. I went to school. I paid money to get a piece of paper that says I can draw on computers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's on my wall. It says graphic design, whatever, right? So, I mean, you know, my corporate life, uh, I've, I wear many hats. I work for a small business that does big business with the U.S. government and, and things like that. So we have to wear many hats. And because of that, you know, just how life goes, you fall into a job and, you do a bunch of stuff that maybe you never intended to be doing. Uh, so I, I didn't really end up doing a lot of direct graphic design stuff in my corporate world. So instead of letting that just kind of fall to the wayside, because it was still a passion of mine ever since I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, went through many phases as a kid, wanted to be a cop, wanted to be an artist, wanted to be a scientist, you name it, right? Like, like all people, we never truly know our true path. We just know what we're on at the, right. at the current point in time. So... It was funny. I've been playing dodgeball as a recreational sport for the last like five or six years. <laughs> right? I mean, that's everything. Like, yeah. Rob, you you're an adult, and I'm like exactly. <laughs> like, no, we've got tons of adult dodgeball leagues. Oh, and it's Don't worry. It do <laughs> best use of a Monday night. Yeah. Period. Right. But anyways, so we got to a point where one year we're like, man, we should make some dodgeball shirts. 
Robo, you're a you're a, a graphic designer. Why don't you make up some shirts? So I made a shirt with Mr. Dodger, like Mr. Rogers on the front, like drawn. I drew Mr. Rogers, and he's holding a dodgeball and giving the middle finger. Sorry, <laughs> giving the middle finger, and like, and we called it Mr. Dodger's Neighborhood, right? And like on the back, said like, "Will we be in a neighbor and all that fun stuff?" And I posted that to Instagram, dude, and people were like, "Where can I buy that shirt?" And I had to tell her, like, you can't. It, like, we made 12 of them. It's just for our dodgeball team. No big deal. And at the same time, okay, at the exact same time that that dropped, I had posted a picture, okay? It was literally just a photo of a really cool Daniel Defense ad from uh, a Guns and Ammo AR-15 mag special edition magazine. And a gentleman in the States who shoots for a professional shooting team and he, he trains state police, um, Messaged me because we, we, we talk every once in a while. And he's, he's mentored me on some things in the in the past, and he was like, "Dude, awesome job getting that that advertisement." And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Isn't that you?" And it was like this guy standing with his head down, kind of like like my operator tee, right? And that's what gave me the idea for that. And I was like, "No, that's not me." But man, wouldn't that make a cool T-shirt? Right. So I was like, "All right." This whole idea of there's people on my Instagram that think my design stuff's cool, plus this original idea. And all I did was I put the two together. And, and started building the kind of hype and the hype that came back, I mean, the interest level, I was like, you know what? I maybe found like a new pastime, you know, like don't get me wrong. And, and you mentioned it. This is not my bread and butter, dude. I work a 40 hour corporate job, which m nobody sees off my Facebook. Right. And that's how I survive. That's how, you know, I'm a real person. Um, beyond that though, uh, I've got free time. I've also a human that has his own wants, goals, passions in life and a willingness to do something about it. So I started doing it. It pays for itself. So, you know, it doesn't cost me money to run the thing. And really what it's done for me, man, is it has allowed me to, again, branch out my interests of firearms and airsoft into an avenue that I'm still skilled in. You know what I mean? I might not be able to machine out lowers and uppers and, and make, you know, be a gunsmith. But I, I know this stuff and then I've got a skill set that I can apply that to. So that's all I did, man. I started making shirts and then hoodies, and now like in the plate carrier tee, and I'm getting into hats and, and all these other goodies eventually. And really what it comes down to, man, is I, I do it on the side because so many kids, uh, you know, kids, adults, everybody in Airsoft, I go to events and I see them just like you did, wearing my stuff, or posting some picture to Instagram or their Facebook of wearing my stuff, or being excited that this package that came from my production facility has my sticker on the outside. Right. I, mean, I know... I know this is going to sound cliche, James, uh, and a little romantic in a way, but I'm this kind of guy, and that is to know that I made somebody happy with some intangible thing that came out of here that I used some sort of skill through some piece of technology to put it on a T-shirt, and that made their world that week. Like, I mean, how? Like, what else do you want out of life, man? Like, if you're, you know, again, I, I work a corporate job. I'm, I'm not hurting for groceries in my fridge and stuff. I, I do okay on that level. You know, nothing to, 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 to do backflips over, but I'm... I have a stable life. Right. What more could I want other than eight more Lamborghinis? You know what I mean? Or like, yeah, or whatever. Right. I mean, honestly, when I wake up and I see some kid in my shirt, he comes up to me and says, you know, oh, I, I, I never, you know, never connected with the apparel I make, but this shirt really speaks to me. I mean, that means the world to me, dude. So, right. uh, dude, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been really well. It's been really going well for me in terms of that. I mean, so many people love what I do. Um, you know, I make it a dedication to take care of my customers. So, if, if that means replacing shirts or or whatever, then I do that. You know, because again, it's not my bread and butter. It's not something I sit there and go, well, if I if I help this person out because they, you know, their mailman ripped the package or whatever and ripped the shirt, and I, I, you know, yeah, I guess if my mortgage depended on that, then I might be like, ah, you know, but I'm not. I'm like, are you happy now? Perfect. That's all I care about, man. Like, right, honestly. right, right, right. And you know, it's those, it's those. Uh, when you're in that kind of business, um, it's the little things that matter as far as like people, like the quality and. Yep. Like, did they take care of me? And that that kind of stuff matters to people. And and you know, I, I get exactly what you're saying. I mean, I think maybe seven people listen to the This Week in Airsoft podcast. But you know, when I <laughs> run into that, but <laughs> when when I run into one of the seven people, like I I was at Irene. This is probably two years ago, and I'm like trudging through some backwood, you know, hell hole, trying to get to the next AO or whatever. And the whole we're like in like the skirmish line, walking through the woods. And some guy walks up to me and is like, I love your podcast, man. And he did, at that point, we didn't do video. So he just heard my voice. And the fact that people like will hear my voice and be like, 
I like your podcast, you know? I mean, number one, that means they listen. Number two, I'm like, they say they like it. I'm like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, well, shit, dude, I'm so glad that, you know, we said something that you connected with on some level and you were like, okay, that's legit. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the best thing. That's the best thing about it. Cause you know, it, look, you could ask any of these airsoft celebrities, um, <laughs> There ain't no money in Airsoft. <laughs> Airsoft is like a poverty. I don't care who you are. You're not making any money. No, dude, you're you not. Know? Movie you're, stuff, for sure. Yeah, you're not making any money. So, yeah. you know, you do it for the love. You do it because you love the sport. You do it because it's fun. You do it because you love, you love like, helping people and, you know, whatever. And, and maybe if, it, if it's guiding someone to the right kind of gear or game or health standard or whatever, that's, that, that helps, you know? Well, there's a value still in that, right? And again, right. it's without going too philosophical in my, to my philosophical side. I get it. We live in a world where everything's instant gratification. If I want to email somebody and contact them, I can. I don't. There isn't that moment in time we're sitting in our living room going, "I wonder where my friend is," right? Like, I mean, we're always constantly con like in contact. We can always order whatever we want off the internet. I mean, we live in a world where everything is so very superficial and not, in a non-negative way that. Honestly, dude, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain this to someone who doesn't get this portion, but um, at the end of the day, there is a great value to some of us as humans. And like you said, somebody, yes, heard your voice. And yes, paid you a verbal compliment. And those things are great. But at the end of the day, what I think, you know, I'm willing to extend this and bet that this is really what mattered to you. And it's what actually matters to me. Is like I said, that intangible piece that is like, wait a minute, like, you know, I just affected somebody's life in a positive way. I mean, they, they, yeah. again, yeah. I said something, something that it comes from here. I made it a reality and that helped you somewhat. Like, I mean, that, that resonated in another human being. It taught them something, it entertained them, it right. yeah. reassured them, whatever. Um, dude, that's massive. I mean, that's, that's bigger than blindly clicking buy on Amazon. Yeah. That's bigger than just hitting like or double tapping a picture. Right. right? I mean, yeah. that's real life, dude. Like that's, that's how things used to be done. Like, realize before the internet, there was things called knights and swords and all that sort of stuff. And to lead an army, you had to be able to, in person, inspire a bunch of people that were probably about to die to go die for you. Right. I mean, there was no internet. Like, let me send you an email. Please meet at 12 a.m. Uh, <laughs> to with your best sword. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very tangible value, I think, to that, that, that knowing that you've affected somebody positively. Right. And that's again, your podcast is a great example. It's why I do Robo Apparel. It's frankly, you said it even more perfectly. None of us are living in some Milson mansion, brother. Okay, yeah, right. No matter how famous anybody perceives anybody in airsoft to be, guess what? They're still paying a ton of money to be that person. Yeah, absolutely. They are not Michael Jordan. They are not no, Tiger Woods, and definitely. probably will not be in our lifetime. Nope. Okay, realize that. Yeah. So you gotta find the intangible things to love about it, man. I mean. Yeah. That, that educating some 14-year-old to become the next responsible, safe 18-year-old player in a field is much more valuable to me it is. than buying a new pair of boots. It is. You're absolutely right. You yeah. know? So, dude, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because that's a part that, again, in, in our young industry, we don't focus on a lot. It can, it can quickly get tied up in the, I bought this from a store, so that store is awesome. Right. And that still has value, too. But there's another value much, much, you know, just slightly under the surface that I think carries a lot more weight in the long run. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. Um, all right, cool, man. Um, so let's, uh, let's, that's my, by the way, that's my always go-to transition. Uh, guys probably, you know, I'm like, that's all right, good. cool. You know, and then I look over to the left to my yeah, uh, list. Let me here. see what the next, let's keep on track. Here. Yeah, all right, <laughs> cool. There we go. All right, so let, let's, let's talk about uh, Copperhead. So you've gone to a lot of U.S. ops now at this point. Um, AMS and and uh, you're at uh, uh, what's her face uh, in South Carolina. Uh, yeah, Faded so, so Faded, uh, Faded in in uh, South Carolina at the GTI facility in uh, last November, and then I ventured back down to New Mexico for the most recent Copperhead. Um, and we'll be at uh, we'll be at Broken Home next month. We'll be at uh, Ironclad in September, and we'll be at Faded Giant Four in in November again. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of adventures recently, brother. Right, right. So, so tell us about Copperhead. You get to the facility. You're with your team. Oh, I, w I wanted to plug your team real quick. Uh, the Airsoft Operators. Very cool logo. 
probably designed by Robo. It was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it very much was. I mean, yeah. the benefit of having a graphic designer around is that you can get a lot of graphic design. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, come on. You give Robo a poke, and out comes a logo. That's it. It's like, <laughs> oh, Robo, you too busy? No, you're not. You're part of the team. Make a logo. It's like, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I no. saw you guys running around. It, it's it's funny. I one thing because we had a Canadian guy on staff. Um, yep. And uh, one thing you one thing you kind of pick up on, you kind of see, is like when you go to airsoft games. And I think Canadians are like the unknown uh, percentage of airsofters in the U.S. But dude, there's so many freaking Canadians at these games. Oh, wow. You know, like uh, John Liu games. They bring. Uh, uh, Death's Hand Airsoft. Yep. Um, uh, the, of course, the guys from BB Bastards come down in droves. Yep. You know, yep. and it's like you see. The, uh, and let me tell you some guys. And I've said this before. And guys think, oh, I'm very pro Canada or something like that. You know, look. Let me tell you something. Canadians are freaking crazy. All right, <laughs> and they are they are some of the most some of the most serious when it comes to airsoft. They are some of the most serious guys I've ever played with. Like they're most dedicated, like get the mission done, let's stick to the game, let's be on task. Like they are on their shit, you know? And that's that's awesome. And it's probably because the guys who come to America to play airsoft are the most dedicated. They are still, the most dedicated. Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, you know, let's lift the veil a bit. Not yeah. all of us are awesome, <laughs> but the, the exposure uh, to the guy, the Canadian guys that are willing to go down to the United States. Again, you're already you've already filtered out a bunch of people, right? right. I mean, for example, it took uh, you know for the airsoft operators, it took until Brock, my team leader uh, and best friend, and I to go down to Faded Giant to actually come back with those very real stories, with the footage, with the pictures, to even convince some of our guys that holy crap, we need to go down to the, some of those too. So, right. you, you you've got this huge demographic of Canadians you're not seeing. So, I mean, it is largely. Uh, like the states is. I mean, there's that there's that stratification. Right. But you're absolutely correct. The guys that most Americans would meet going down there. I mean, you named them. Uh, some of them, the Death Hand. So that they were, you know, part of uh, a couple guys from Death Hand were down at Copperhead. They were in my squad, uh, or our squad, I should say. And uh, another group of guys that you'll see at say like a lot of the Operation Lions Clause events, and they're close with the BB Bastard guys. But like say Force Recon, who are we're close friends with right. here. Um, yeah, the, we're, the guys that go down are definitely a little bit serious. And, you know, I've spent some time trying to figure out if there's any difference. And I don't think there really is, except for one thing. And that is, there seems to be a trend in Canada where most of our major mill sims are much longer events. We don't split them up like AMS. Now, personally, I prefer, in terms of airsoft, a split up event. It keeps the airsoft play much better, right. uh, in my opinion. Only my opinion. Um, but because we're used to doing like eight, like 18 hours is like a minimum kind of like actual milsim event, a constant play, no breakdown, right? Um, that breeds a different kind of dedicated player that's going to go down to the States right, that right. will maybe excel a little bit more in say, when I go to an AMS event, having those, that two hour break at dinner and having a night of, of you know, either camping or staying in a comfy hotel or whatever, motel, uh, if you want to swing for it, that is a huge effect on my performance. Right. Um, than it does when I'm standing there at hour 19 without any sleep after running around and like, I mean, you're delirious, right? So yeah, dude, um, I've also noticed that a lot of the guys that you'll kind of, will kind of run down there with are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more put together, but you know, no more than say the American guys. It's just maybe a more of a stark realization. It's like, I didn't have never met a Canadian and now I'm meeting a badass one. You know? like, yeah. That's probably what it is. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I haven't played airsoft in Canada. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, all the ones I've met are like, have been very legit and very loyal to the cad pat. So, oh. you know, <laughs> that's the thing, like that's the only thing I'm not loyal to. Like I've, I'll be, I'm the first one to tell you, I'm really not a fan of cad pat only, only because I don't, there's a, there's like a small window per, like if, of my very limited experience where I say, okay, cad pat works perfectly. And that is if you're in, in a Canadian pine forest, you're invisible. Right. Uh, but anywhere else you're sort of not invisible whatsoever. So, I mean, um, yeah, Force, Force Recon, uh, dudes in Death's Hand, they love Cad Pat. You know, they rock Cad Pat everywhere they go in the United States. Uh, I'm personally more of a multi-cam tropic guy for green, but <laughs> either here nor there. <laughs> right, right, right. No, no, you know, it's all about preference. Preference, dude. It's, again, it's preference, right? Yeah. We're talking airsoft, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're talking about an application where we get to wear camouflage, where in the real world this camouflage is scrutinized with really scientific... Uh, processes and is put through you know the military industrial complex to prove that it works right 
Airsoft dude, you just got to like it. If, is it green? Perfect. Are you on green team? Awesome. Do you like what you're wearing? Yeah. Great. That's all you need to worry about. Yeah, right. You don't really worry about IR signature. You don't really need to know about the algorithms that go into some of those digital patterns. You just get to buy it and wear it. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's Airsoft. It's preference, you know? Yeah, right, 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 right. No, you're absolutely right. There's all kinds of things that go into the, the, yeah. the, the camouflage it, it, that we never it, think about. It, it, yeah, that stuff. That stuff all matters, and yeah. because life and death. But for us, really, does it matter? No, yeah, <laughs> you know, no. you get to wear what you want to wear. Like I, I said, as long as you meet the event standards, you're not showing up in pink uniform when you're got to be green or tan. Then right. you're thumbs up in my world, man. Like I, I feel like the scary, the scary fact is, one day IR signature will matter in airsoft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once exactly. everybody has not nods, it's going to be like, oh, my God, I need to get the IR signature down. <laughs> you are correct. I mean, yeah. as the sport progresses, and that is to say, if we grow large enough where, you know, either a better, a better um, technology for airsoft use emerges, and that is it becomes more affordable but it's still usable, right? Because right. let's be honest. The most affordable uh, night, like light amplification devices out there aren't really that good. Oh, I mean, yeah. the really cheap ones, it's almost like, why did he even bother, right? Yeah. Um, so until we get big enough where that, that becomes available, um, we've got some time. But I think you're right, dude. There will be a moment in time where you know, all my friends are starting to pick up nods. They've gotten to that point. I've yeah. got all the high-speed kit. I can't buy any more pants. You know yeah, what I mean? I've got right. every tropic. I've got every cry pattern. Like, what more can you want? The next, and I, I, I always feel that it should be the final piece, not the first piece. Uh, but the final piece of the puzzle is that okay, time to save up like seven to ten grand and buy a small car for my face. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Absolutely. Jeez. <laughs> you know, like it's oh, I'm not looking forward to it, but you're right. Once yeah. we all have nods, all that stuff will matter and we will have to learn it. Yeah. You know, or get continually made fun of on Instagram by real reward guys who laugh at us for <laughs> for real reasons, you know, like right. you know, so no, it's a, it's a, plus you see the guys who, and uh, here I am rambling and off tracking here, but I feel like uh, you see guys who run that. I mean, let's like quickly, probably like four years ago, people like GMR, day nods, you know, they're running their nods in the daytime and all this kind of stuff. And they see GMR running around and they're like, who use like nods? That's crazy. Da, da, da. And it's a freaking, uh, just a, a, a game changer, you know, for what they're doing, you know, yep. and I still see guys fighting the battle of like, I don't need nods for airsoft. And look, I'm not saying you do, you don't, you don't, you, don't. you can go out and have a great time without them. I've done it for years. Yep. You know, um, I have some like low quality Chinese gen one, horrible, horrible, horrible knockoff. I'm a spotlight and a beacon in the night. Uh, <laughs> IR amplification. Nuts. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. You know, I have some horrible ones, but I use them at lightning strike. And, you know, there were some guys with real nods, you know, but I use them at lightning strike and just the ability to see down a corridor with no light being exposed and to see clearly down like a 50 foot long corridor was a game changer. It's massive. Dude. It was just a massive game changer. I yeah. mean, it made me so much more effective. So, I mean, I think it's gonna, the time will come for everybody at some point. We have to be, you'll have to do something, whether it's like yeah. you get some kind of IR thing like I have or you go really hardcore. But yeah, uh, yeah well, it's a. Uh, it's one of those things where, again, as it grows, right, yeah. more of us will end up with them. So to compete on that same level, you it will be one of those things you need to buy. Much like, while you don't really need any sort of specific load bearing, uh, load bearing kind of equipment like a vest or a whatever you want to wear, it's kind of necessary. Right. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of how you feel about it the topic of carrying something on your chest is necessary. Right. How you go about that now is your choice. But to compete, you need to be on that level. And I think it will get there, dude. Uh, you know, whatever you're using to, to be able to see in the dark is your preference, but that level of ability will be needed. And, I mean, you're, again, you're absolutely right. It's a game changer. I mean, let's, the topic of nods across the board, uh, let's be honest, the United States Army is effective as it is because it can do nighttime shit. Um, right, yeah. The, the baddest, biggest MFers in the, on the world do all the stuff in the middle of the night. Why? They can see. Yeah, right. <laughs> They've got this crazy technology that lets them see when, you know, all of us are still stuck in caveman mode going, holy crap, I'm afraid of the dark. Right, well, yeah. The absolutely. dark wake, comes into your house and bites you while you're sleeping. You know what right. I mean? Like, that it is. It's a game changer across the world as a technology. And, of course, for Airsoft, man. Like, again, we still, we still live in, a, in an environment where when we see a team roll up, 
and I mean this across the board, doesn't matter what event you go to, you see a team roll up that is capable of running just like they run during the day at nighttime, and unless you can meet that same, like, on the same level as them, I mean, it's almost like, holy crap, like, we're done. Yeah, like, right. Um, and that's where you get back to that idea. At some point in time, we're going to either be forced as an entire community uh, to play on that level or choose to not play night games. I mean, that's right. just it, right? Right. Um, or buy really powerful flashlights and, and learn the proper way to use flashlights in the dark. You know, again, it's not necessary. You can get by at night and have a great time uh, with flashlights. You just got to know how to use them. You know? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, that's a whole other show, man. Flashlight, all, dude, that, flashlight dude, discipline. Yeah, dude, flash, <laughs> like light theory, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Dude, that is, they could take up four hours in a talk. Absolutely. On its own, man. Absolutely. So. All right, so let's um, let's talk about uh, Copperhead, man. Yeah. Um, you went down there. Uh, I was there. Great yes. AO, amazing AO. Uh, pretty big. Um, there's things about it I didn't like in my yep. first AMS game, but as far as like getting getting into the stuff, you know, I think it was a great AO. But l let me hear about because you were where I was kind of like back like. Taking my time, getting here and there. You were like, every time I look over and I would like see Robo, he's like, oh, 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 I'm trucking. I probably, way you saw me, like anytime anybody probably saw me is when I was making the craziest sprint over the longest short distance. Right. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> there's massive open fields there. So you had to book, man. You had to book. Yeah, it, there was. I mean, between, like, especially when you started getting from house, the back of a house to the back of another house on, say, like an adjacent street. I mean, right. you're talking a good 100 meter sprint. Sure, yeah. Um, and again, let's factor some things in. Not many of us do a lot of 100 meter sprinting past, say, our high school years, right? Yeah, yeah. Or even younger. And then the second part of that is we're wearing long sleeve stuff with a bunch of extra equipment that isn't our, our own body weight in the middle of a desert in like almost 100 degree heat. So I mean there's a lot of factors in there dude that yeah, it's it was a very challenging AO purely on environmental standards alone, not even just the gameplay, you know? Like it was it was tough. So what what was your uh like give us the give us a your like a, your quick kind of your thoughts recap what was great, what was uh what you look forward to next year, yep. you know, give, give give us give us give it all to us. Uh okay, so as I, I guess my overall opinion um you know, again, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit biased because I, I just generally like how the AMS events are set up based on what I'm used to here, right? right. So there's a lot of comparison kind of envy there. Um, but overall, man, I mean, like Faded and like uh, like Copperhead, uh, I think overall they, they, they give the user, they, they give the end user, this, you know, this person who's purchased a ticket, a really, really valuable uh, set of experiences for whatever money they, they, they provide for that, right? Like, you know, let's say we, it costs us, you know, $200 to, to sign up for an event that's halfway across the country and there's a lot of other expenses that go into that. Well, none of us at least walk away going, oh, man, that was a lot of money. Right. We don't, I mean, after you attend an event like that, I mean, it was the same thing we, when we came back from Faded. I mean, I joke about it. Brock and I had, like, Milsim boners for, like, three weeks. You know what I mean? Like, we shouldn't have <laughs> calling doctors if we were on pills, right? right. So it's like... It's priapism, Milsim priapism. That, that's it. It's like, oh man, it's been more than, it's been way more than four hours. <laughs> it's just like, it's one of those things where it's on a totally different level than us Canadians get to enjoy. And, and you know, for, for the viewers, small piece about Canada, our government does not let us use facilities like that. All of our deactivated military bases, all the things like, you know, abandoned warehouses and stuff like that, they're a lot harder to use in Canada. Whereas in the United States, this town failed in a place called Playas, New Mexico, because you know the copper mine ran up, uh, dried up, and that same company buys the town out of bankruptcy and turns it into a counter terror training facility, which you can rent. Right. Um, that just doesn't exist in Canada. So for us, there's a lot of like, holy crap! I'm so overwhelmed by what we get to experience. That, um, dude, I have nothing but good things to say about, I guess, the overall Milsim experience. Um, the things I will say. You know, I saw issue with during Copperhead, and this this is not at Copperhead. This comes with with all Milsim events, and that is, you know, there was a couple instances of hit calling issues, but that's a part of that's a part yeah, of airsoft. That's air that stuff. Dude, yeah. I don't harp on that stuff. I mean, you know, yeah, you can be annoyed to yourself, but I mean, you should be able to let it go as quickly as it pops up because it's just it's just airsoft, right? So there was that. Um, there was there was some confusing moments in the game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm releasing a gameplay 
footage video next week that'll have a part of that in. You know, Green Team got a little, I guess, too far ahead on the map at some point in time. So there was a lot of confusion of being asked to pull back and stuff like that. And, and I understand that and in terms of gameplay. But obviously, it still throws a monkey wrench in there. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Uh, especially when, uh, for the first time ever, it was like, what, like 60 or 70% new participants to AMS events at this one. So it was... Uh, there wasn't even a lot of the old the old guard to be around to kind of stabilize things. So when you know the morning was a perfect example. How many like you know there was like four or five ceasefires within like that first hour of play, yeah, right. and no one knew what was going on. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the event itself, you know, command was keeping everything on that kind of that that roadblock line. Like no one was advancing into enemy territory and 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 the reverse. So there was already confusion there, and then you throw in a bunch of ceasefires. So I mean, it's I think I think it's just. The growing pains of growing the AMS event, and that is eventually you're going to draw in new players that are going to need an event or two to kind of solidify their place in that. So that's what I would call the only negative that I saw, um, and that's natural stuff. I mean, it's you know it's why I still like AMS events. It's not like I went to their event and I was like, man, I hated half of what I experienced. You know, it was, right. it's that same, you know, the same two percent of problems we all have with any Millsum event we go to, and the rest was pretty great. You know, so right, right. I feel like. Um I mean, from my perspective, uh, I've never done an AMS event before, and I'm going to do a full AR at some point when I'm stopping lazy. But, uh, <laughs> the I human mean, condition. Yeah, right? Um, life happening yeah, all over yeah, my face. All the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like uh, my first AMS event, I had a good time. I mean, it, it, for me, it's cool. You know, you get to meet everybody, see everybody you know. You know, I've interviewed, like, probably like 400 people in the airsoft world, you know, either on the show or the podcast or a video, you know, and I, to meet these people in person is pretty awesome. It's pretty yeah. cool. Um, so that was good. You know, I got to hang out with some cool friends, guys I know, guys I've worked with and stuff. That was awesome. Um, as far as the op, I, I guess I didn't have any expect. I had some expectations, but I've yeah. done lots of John Lou ops and mind games ops and stuff like that. So uh, because he's mo there, there are a lot on the East Coast. Yep. So I hadn't done an AMS ops. I didn't have anything to base it on. Um, what did you What did you see the difference uh, being then? Uh, I mean, turning it around on you right now. <laughs> no, I mean between between like a, a John Lou and an AMS op. Honestly, the the biggest things and and this is one thing that AMS does really well, right? They understand the little things. You know, it's like the same thing with Milsim West and how Josh Warren does business. He understands him and Brian. They understand the little things, yep. you know, like immersion and the little details. You know, um, AMS they they understand the little things. They know how to bring a player onto the game, into the game environment, super safely um, and still efficiently. You know, um, their player intake procedure amazing, best in the business, hands down. Dude, now I, I gotta say that what happened this year, what we saw this year, and I was just talking about this today with with uh, with our people back here at home, and that is, it is, dude. That's that's industry standard. It should be right. Yeah, absolutely, that, 100%. That, that intake stream, dude, ensured ensured loyal loyal you uh, like players who would do that stuff anyways didn't have to worry about ones who wanted to cut the corner. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and the thing is, it fed you every place you needed to be, you know? Yep. And, I, guys, I'll go into detail on that when I do an AAR, yep. but it, it's going to feed you It feeds you in all the places. It's a great process. And, you know, not saying that other promoters do a really a, a shit job. They do it differently, but this process is idiot-proof, and that's yep. what I like about it. Um, so that was one, like, mega plus. The other thing is the promoters play the game. Uh... I know that not all promoters can do that because they're busy trying to run a game, but these guys have a staff that they can rely on to run the game, and they can they can play the game and kind of be that in-staff admin. They see game flow. They see what works and what doesn't work, and they can constantly tweak, 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 tweak until every year they get it right and get it to the best, best it can be. Um, that I thought was great. I know that – I didn't know this at the time, but I know now that there are some last-minute uh, command changes, like command, yes. command stuff happened. There was, um, yep. I feel like uh, cost command was super weak. It was like super weak and super bad. Uh, yeah. Totally not, totally not impressed with it at all. I've been to enough uh, Milsim ops run by real military COs and stuff like that, and run by game staff that I know there's good ways to do it, like great ways and wrong ways. And the way it was done, wrong. Um, but to quote 
you know, Josh Warren, because we had a talk, we talked about this, and to quote a lot of other guys, I mean, I feel like everyone who knows anything about airsoft will say this, you make the game, you know? You have to make it fun. So I hung out with guys from Santa Fe, not Santa Fe, Albuquerque, had a ball with them. You know, we had so much fun. Um, I broke uh, airsoft, uh, I destroyed airsoftology Jonathan's plate carrier. Buckle, right? Like yeah, <laughs> annihilated it. <laughs> I trashed it. Uh, <laughs> LBT, shame Jonathan on you. The best guy to do that too, man. Like he would get up and like high five you for destroying an LBT. Oh my bike. god, he was not. He was not pleased. Actually, he was actually he handled it like such a pro. I felt like I felt like total garbage. I felt so bad. You know, if for guys who don't know, AMS has the dragging rule, and I didn't. You know, in the heat of the thing of what's going on, I saw him there and I was like, oh well, I'll just get him. So I went to grab him, and I said, I'm coming to grab you, and I grabbed his shoulder pad, yeah. you know, instead of his drag handle, and I pulled him, and the buckle and shoulder pad was, like, a massive weak point. It broke, you know? Yep. And then that one broke, and then I went ahead for good measure and broke the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonathan gets up, and his plate carrier is just, like, hugging his body, and he's like, great, my game's done today. I was like, oh, man, I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> well, and that's, dude, well, that's the thing. I mean, that, you know, it's a good point. In the heat of the moment, uh, you know, this is another thing for, you know, mindset stuff that could take up hours and hours and hours of conversation, but that idea that uh, in the moment your brain does some really wonky things. I mean, you, right. don't, you don't decide things the exact same way that you generally will decide things when looking in your fridge for something to drink, right? right. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that adrenaline dump does some, fun, does some really funny things at times. Um, but I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, John, Jonathan handled it like a pro because number one, that's Jonathan is. I mean, yeah, he's right. a stellar dude, right? Like just a down-to-earth person. And yeah, you know what? Guess what? We're all human. It sucks to see something that we've spent money on and developed some sort of attachment to break. Uh, but handling it a pro means that he didn't turn around and punch James in the face. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, <laughs> which he would have been completely warranted in doing. Dude, I mean, you know, depending on the human and their personality, that might be their go-to reaction. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying the professional way is it's not, and that is. Yeah. Shit happens. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know, we'll deal with it as it comes. And yeah. while we don't like to, to admit that the universe has it against us some days, it just happens, man. You right. roll with it, you know? Like, right. So, right. and the thing is, dude, and it was, it was tough at Copperhead because there was, unlike something like Faded Giant, where sure, you're in the center of like this, like nuclear fuel processing plant. So we're talking like smooth concrete floors, like that very industrial kind of setup. So right. even when you're inside dragging somebody, uh, it's a lot easier. I mean, you can slide around like John Woo movies and all that fun stuff, all the cool guy stuff, right? The difference with Copperhead, though, is that it's a suburban area. And I don't know if you looked outside or, uh, or ever thought about it. Most people probably haven't. The reason the roads are rough outside is to increase traction against this little thing called rubber that's on our car tires. Right. right? So for stopping and all that fun stuff. It also increases traction when you're trying to slide a human body across. Yeah, it. right. It was really tough, dude. There was, it was tough to drag guys if they were on any sort of like sidewalk or roadway there because none of it was like the industrial smooth concrete. It was right. all stuff designed for traction. So unless you were sitting on like a, a, uh, like a sand dune in one of the big open areas, it was really hard to drag dudes, man. Right, right. And of course, the entire time, everybody's fighting the war crime of wanting to kick their feet to help, right? Like, oh yeah, right, yeah. Because <laughs> you kick your feet and get and risk the war crime at Copperhead, or it's like you rip your buckle off your, your right, kick, so. right. No, Jonathan was a real pro, man, and I really appreciate him. He's cool about that. Um, but I, I feel like a, a lot of the problems I had with the op also had to do with, uh, and you tell me what, what you if you agree yeah, or not. Sure. I think that it was um, first time location jitters. Yep. I feel like this is the first time in this location that's two hours away from any humanity yep. in the middle of the desert. Everything, every creature is trying to kill you out there. Yep. I think they covered all the bases they could, and I think that this is one of those situations where – AMS is going to look internally, look externally, and say, okay, next year we're going to do this, 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 and this to improve gameplay. I mean, the the whole, like, holding the line in the beginning of the thing, honestly, aggravating. I hated it. I, I hate, hate it. I hate it. Personally, I yeah, hate it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I wanted really. to, like, cross the road and just, put boot to ass. Yeah, you, you guys want to kick a door down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I was just like, why are we standing here? We can see Tan there. They're stuck behind that building. They don't want to come over here. Let's go and give them a personal invite to our personal ass-kicking tea party. Yeah, man. You know? And, and that was, like, that frustrated me. But it's a game mechanic. And I think that, you know, that's the beauty of AMS, and I guess I'll be proved or disproved next year, but I think the, that's the beauty of AMS so far is that they 
they change and fix things to try to develop this great kind of experience. So yeah. I'm looking forward to next year, and uh, I'm hoping it's going to be great, man. You're you're right, and I think you know you touched on a couple of things that in my evaluation I could have included uh, in the negative com column. Number one, I'll touch on what you said. I do agree with you completely, 100%, James. And that was, in terms of at least communication over the comms, uh, there was none from command for yeah. like. I didn't do. I didn't have contact even through my RTO with any command elements the entire event. Right. Yeah. Where I got my command information was meeting in the field. Right. Uh, it was personal one on one. We're we're looking over a map and stuff. And again, you see a lot of that. In my footage is going to come out from this. Is that you see that more than anything else? Communications for me was was internal. You know, what I mean, with my with with our guys and whatnot. Um, so that could have definitely been improved, man. Um, and again, I only. There was. There was definitely some last-minute command changes due to whatever circumstances. Um, and that whole non-communication plus that very start of the, you know, let's everybody hold back, but no one's getting any. It was. For me too, dude, it was aggravating. It's, it's, I am very much my play style is show me where work needs done and it's going to get done. Yeah, exactly. I can't sit here though. I mean, I'm just, I'll sit there and go, I want to, we got to go do something. Like, there's work. I can see the work that needs to be done. Yeah, exactly. So, Take, take, let me off the chain, man. Just let me go do what I do best. You know what I mean? Like, um, so it was a little aggravating in that sense. And I do also agree with you. I think, you know, now that you've said it and, and I'm just kind of looking back at it, there was, I think there was a lot of reservation because it was, we ought to be on our best behavior and let's focus more on the stuff that doesn't screw this up for next year. Right. Because I think that's very important into our, to where our industry is currently. And that is, we are just beginning to achieve some sort of legitimacy in what we do compared to how that can apply to the real firearms world. And I don't mean, I, I do, I want to be very clear. I don't mean that statement like what we do is on the same level. I just mean that the, the real world is finally going, there's at least some applicable stuff there if you're willing to treat it right. Rather than just being like, you guys are playing with toy guns, get out of my face. Right. And I think that was really solidified um, by Mr. Bunce at the very end. I mean, I don't want to say this statement and have a bunch of kids go see where Navy SEALs. I, right. I do not want to, to have anybody walk away from this next statement. I take it out of context. But what Mr. Bunt said to me, uh, said, oh, like at that final closing ceremony, said the fact that, you know, over X number of years, over 20 years of being in that business and running a facility like this, that for, the, for his first time as a human being, a, a real world legitimate human being, probably his first time ever really sitting down and took, taking a look at what airsoft can be not what they think it is um and that was kind of you know you could kind of see that when people had their their lawn chairs set, set yeah up right on top of houses watching us do what we do like it's a spectator sport mm -hmm. that was that was crazy to me <laughs> yeah i know right and and him turning around and going look i've been training guys in the real world for a really long time and i saw some stuff that was real world stuff here it wasn't just a bunch of kids running around like stupid idiots. You know what I mean? Like that, that upfront assumption that I think a lot of the, the bigger industries, the more real industries still have on Airsoft. So it's an important time that I think, yes, we do cover those bases. But I think you're right, dude. It led to some very tentative kind of concessions with, okay, this is our first time here and this can be an epic location for years to come. We just can't F it up right now. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. It, it seemed like we spent more time in briefings talking about don't shoot the flat screen TV. Um, than it was planning what we were to do. And again, I don't say that's maybe wrong. It's just for someone like you or I that we're not going to shoot a flat screen TV. Let's just be honest. We're not yeah. that guy. No, no, yeah. To harp on that stuff, it kind of gets old. Yeah, but you there's know? a dozen guys who will, 100%. Well, oh, but that's, that's the problem. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly the problem. I mean, we have to harp on it as an industry at this point in time because yeah. for every one or two of me or you, there's a 20 guys that just want to light up that flat yeah. screen TV just to say they lit up a flat screen TV. Yeah, exactly. Those guys who dive through a plate glass window and all kinds yeah, of dumb shit. I mean, it's crazy. No, we, I mean... We've seen all the examples of it. There's a lot of prime ones. I mean, uh, GMR is that classical one yeah. where everybody goes, don't do what GMR used to do kind yeah. of thing, right? So right. It's, it is. It's just one of those things that can happen. I think AMS played their cards right for the business to ensure that we come back next year. And I'm like I said, uh, well, actually, like you said, I think I will also be pleasantly surprised slash it will be confirmed that next year will be much, even much more different positively than even how awesome Copperhead was right now. Because again, we've, they've got the relationship now. 
they know how the the AO can can be run. They know how it can run players too. You know what I mean? Like the AO itself, how many guys are going to lose it to heat, or how many snakes we're seeing, all that sort of stuff. Right. To be used as really valid data to make next year, like Copperhead two, that much better. Right. Right. So. Right. Right. And I think uh, I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to next year is uh, we're going to see more player vehicles. Yeah, I dude, thought the, yeah. that was insane to me. Like, I mean, you know, we've got an event here called Nightfall where there's a green truck and a tan truck, but we're talking an AO that is like a fifth the size of 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 Copperhead. So there's not a lot of really a lot of stuff you can do with it. I mean, right. honestly, at the end of the day, those trucks generally spend a lot of time stationary, just going to town with the machine gun because. You don't really need to drive around a lot of places right. on the AO. But for Copperhead to see a U-Haul truck full of dudes that would jump out of the back, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. that or the Evic Humvee or you know people's converted vehicles. I mean, it was impressive to see that many on the field and actually see them used to any sort of legitimacy. Like yeah, They were right. useful, man. They were totally useful. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely. There's definitely a place for that. Oh, so completely. I'm, I'm it's looking... against that immersion factor, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. For, yeah, for a yeah. guy like you or me, it's that little thing that keeps us in our fantasy world during the, the event instead of like, <laughs> oh, right, i got to answer that email after I get done this. this yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going back to sleep in a Dodge Caravan. <laughs> right. Ah, like, oh, crap. You know, like when I wake up tomorrow, i got to sift through my inbox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. don't want to – and that's the thing. You don't want to be thinking of that stuff, and it's those immersion pieces that AMS does that keeps you – Keeps you from the real world for as long as you actually have paid to want to be out of it, you know, right. like, so. Right. All right, cool. So, um, we've talked for about an hour and 20 minutes, man. <laughs> so, I don't want to hold you up, man. I appreciate I appreciate, I appreciate you coming on, man, and, and well, spending some time with us. On, man. And, you know, uh, always, you know, come, you know, we'd love to have you back any number of times, talk about anything that's going on with, uh, with you. Um, where are you going to be in the next coming months as far as what yeah, you can Yeah, the next coming months, I'll, I'll lay it all out. So um, I do have two Canadian ops here, June and July, uh, that I'm going to, Nightfall being one of them, uh, another being run by Canadian Milsim Operations uh, uh, here in Ontario. A friend of mine runs that, so he's throwing an event that we're going to locally. Um, they're a little bit longer, so the 18 kind of plus continual hour Canadian-style Milsim that we generally have up here. Uh, for your, the larger audience at hand uh, that might be watching your show, uh, I will be at Broken Home uh, next month in May, and that's in, in uh, Oklahoma uh, with the helicopters and all that fun stuff. Right. Um, I will be at Ironclad in September, and that's in Mississippi, uh, down in Camp Shelby. And I will be attending Faded Giant 4 because, uh, I mean, Faded Giant was my first incursion to the United States, and honestly, I fell in love. <laughs> you know, so I, I, with my relationship with the Red Wolf, we sponsor the uh, Red Wolf Players Den, right? Um, the, the Wolf Den at all of my AMS events. So I'm going to be there anyways, hanging out. Uh, so, you know, everybody, anybody who's showing up to those things, obviously look for me there. I will be there. I'm a very public person. I love chatting. So, you know, it's not like I'll be hiding in a dark corner. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's basically my landscape right now. Okay. I mean, for the set things. Other than that, dude, uh, I'm kicking out a ton of media over the next little while because I want to kick out all my, my Copperhead stuff um, before I get into Broken Home recording, right? And I got to follow right. up with that stuff. So, um, yeah, people will be able to find me at uh, those uh, the two Canadian offs here, June and July. They'll find me in uh, Oklahoma most recently, uh, or the next most recent event is is Broken Home. So okay, all right, great, all right. And you got your I'm um, looking at your site. You got uh, Copperhead gameplay part one up, and you got your Copperhead, Copperhead preview from about a week ago. Yep, um, I've got right now sitting on my computer. Uh, I just did the voiceover this morning, so tonight uh, I'm uh, I'm putting together the final uh, copy of part two. That'll come out later this week. I'm actually on vacation, like a personal vacation for a wedding uh, out of the country for the next week. So I'm, I'm going to have it scheduled to go up. The only unfortunate thing is you won't see a lot of promotion yet until I get back through things like, say, Instagram or whatnot that I have to do right. through my phone and I just won't I'll be out of the country. So, um, yeah, so part two. And I also have a rough edit for part three uh, already done as well. I just got to do the voiceover for that. So you'll probably see part two Nick, this following week, this coming week, uh, bleh, this week coming up. Part three the next week after that. I, I want to spit out four or five uh, gameplay videos from Copperhead, and they'll all hopefully be out before I go to, to Broken Home, or the last one at least being that weekend when I, that last week of May when I'm home from Broken Home, uh, before I start spitting out that footage as well. Okay, so. cool. And you, you did the damn mission, right? I did do the damn mission at Copperhead. The only, see, the weird thing with this year's damn mission uh, was it was a nighttime mission. Right. 
Um, and actually, uh, there's only one person with footage from that damn mission. And uh, this gentleman was on my damn, the damn mission our team did. Um, so there will be footage. It will be night vision footage. I just can't speak for them, A, when that's coming out. Um, I just do know that that footage exists. I've seen little tiny pieces of it. So if you can get stoked through me being stoked about seeing that footage, then okay. yeah, it, there should be something coming How out. How was but it? It won't be from me directly. So How was the dam? It was good, man. Like, so it was different, right? You got to yeah. understand. So the dam, it was a completely different experience than the dam I experienced at Faded Giant. Faded Giant's dam was just off the hook, dude. Like, dudes repelling off the sides of this tower and like... It was crazy. <laughs> just go back and watch my damn footage from Faded Giant, and you'll just be like, man, I know exactly what I was talking about, how crazy that was. Um, so this one was different because it was at night. We literally, we drove, we drove around the AO in the pitch black in these two trucks, and just a ton of us unloaded into the market, and there was like blank fire guns going off. There was uh, IEDs hooked up to smoke grenades and stuff, so not obviously explosive IEDs, but like real deal. You walk past them, the smoke grenades go off. There was dudes to tackle there was sleeping actors in beds who pull a nine on you as soon as you turn your back i mean it was it was really cool and challenging and for a guy like myself who plays pretty high level milsim sometimes it's just another piece of the puzzle man like it's another thing to problem solve through and that's what my stupid nerdy airsoft brain loves to do is problem solve my way through some real life stuff you know without getting shot and having to join the military i guess so. very cool very cool all right, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about that, and I totally forgot about it. Dude, so, that's, that's totally cool. that <laughs> the, the dam was, like, supposedly very awesome, so that's it cool. It was. It was pretty awesome. Like I said, it was different. Not a lot of people are going to get to see it after the fact if you didn't experience it just because it was at night, right? And there's right. a huge rotation for recording there, as you know, so. Yeah, we'll have to – hopefully uh, if your buddy gets that video as soon up or something. As, dude, it will be big news as soon as that drops. So it, it's coming from a high-profile person, so it, you won't – you. People will not miss it if it drops. So okay. I just Great. I just know he's working on it right now. Like I mean, the technology of recording things in night vision is really difficult, uh, and to produce that footage so it's really usable is another another process. So I just know it's taking time. So. Right, right, right. Okay, all right, cool. All right. Um. So uh, oh, and if guys don't know, you know the Red Wolf Airsoft, uh, Wolf Den, uh, Shrimp Cocktail, Lobster Tails. Yeah, dude, come Don Perry on. They're doing it big. Crazy. Yeah, Couches. Yeah. I wish, yeah, little cheese slices with little toothpicks in them. It's crazy, man. Like those little tiny like sausages with the dip. <laughs> yeah, there's a chip in it, a chicken in a bikini real, named Barbara. A, I mean, I, you know, it's a great place to show. It's what I experienced for the first time at Faded Giant. And that was, you know, it was different here at Copperhead. They had, we had some product to kind of show off just so, not to sell, just to show off so people had awareness and ask us questions. Um, but the big thing is it's a, it's, a, it's a safe place for people to go, get out of the sun, have a hot event get some free water, get some free chips, whatever it is to keep you in the game, right. Red Wolf wants to do. So definitely at all those AMS events, come hang out with us there for yeah. sure. Very cool, very cool. All right, so uh, again, last time I promise, the awkward air, This Week in Airsoft ending. I appreciate <laughs> you coming on, man. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, supporting us and uh, you know talking to us a little bit and letting us know what's up and what's going on. And we'll definitely follow up with you as the year goes on to uh, pump you for more information about Red Wolf and everything else. Perfect, um, I guess I'll say this in return then, James. I mean, sincerely, dude, I appreciate you even stopping me and asking, you know, being interested in pulling me on your show. I mean, again, like I said, you wouldn't know this now in, in conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm still a really humble dude. I always will be. So, I mean, it's amazing to me when, when someone like yourself wants to speak to me on whatever is in my brain. So, I love that dude. Um, I always make time for great shows. So, anytime you want to just have a good conversation and it fills some, uh, some time space for, for your users and they want to see me talk about some stuff, I'll make the time, brother. I appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. No, no problem. Man. All right. So, as always, guys, this show is brought to you by audible.com. We got to make that got to make that money, that bling bling. Make cash, man. Um, <laughs> audible. Good, yeah. yeah, audible.com. So, guys, audible.com uh, audibletrial.com/airsoft. Uh, 30 days free and you get a free book out of it. So, go no. check it out. It's uh, on Audible's dime. You sign up and it helps out the show. I'm a huge Audible fan. I love it. You guys are going to love it. Robo says he loves it. Dude, it's, so, again, I'm, I'm an intellectual guy myself, yeah, so, I mean, so it's Audible. Yeah. It's actually a great site. It's awesome. All right, so, uh, guys, thanks a lot, and uh, we will see you next time.